got super fucking emotional last night because it is, I think, um, it's really difficult to take a good hard look at something that's, um, not very attractive about you. You know what I mean? Like to, to really actually say the words, like, I think, I think I have a drinking problem Mm. is it. It's a scary thing. Like, and I, I feel it myself. I feel embarrassed. Mm. You know, it yeah. feels like a weakness, and um, it just is is something that just happened really slowly over time. And I told you guys this morning, it felt like you know a frog in a pot of of boiling water. Where like it wasn't something that me and my ex husband ever used to keep in the house. Maybe like we weren't as social. Back then, so when we did hang out, it was like every couple of weeks sure. grabbing drinks with with friends, and then it turned into you know as I'm like single and going out with our friend group mm-hmm. multiple times a week. Of course, involves alcohol. Going out on dates, of course, involves alcohol. Oh, and now I'm bringing home a couple bottles of wine. Yeah, I just <laughs> got home from work. Let's just crack well, open and some an wine. There's an amount of anxiety that goes along with dating. Yeah, right. Of you're an introvert. I'm an extrovert and I still would want something to calm my nerves. Oh, if yeah. I was meeting somebody I didn't know and you're, you have this pressure to be like charming, like your most charming, your most witty, your most um, right. uninhibited self. Yeah. And like that is hard to do at the best of times. Right. You know, you know? so it's, I, I do the same thing. I, I definitely, if we're doing networking, networking does not come naturally to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I think that I'm a pretty outgoing person. Um, and I love, I love meeting people. I don't think I have a problem having conversations with people, but if it's a networking situation where I'm like, Oh, I have to talk my, it's that Midwestern in you where you're like, yeah. you have to talk about yourself and you right. have to sell yourself and you have yeah. to make yourself seem interesting. Yeah. And I definitely will use alcohol in those situations to try and like, loosen myself up but open the, myself up at the last event in which you did we did go to you weren't drinking yes and you and i think that was a great proof for yourself that you didn't need it because i can do it i think we we relied on each other in the beginning where we kind of stuck together and and in a cluster you and i of trying to like talk to people and then we separated and we did and i think right. that once you got warmed up and yes. with alcohol you still were fine you, and, yes and i think that those are those little milestones when you're like oh i can do this that are helpful but even the the journey with with for the two of you i remember when you guys were talking about this in october i mean mm-hmm. i mean my my brain from where i was in october to the short period of time to where we are now i actually did a, my own little introspection where i was like i i i i, I don't want to say i made fun of you but i kind of was like wow I think that what I said to myself without saying it out loud was, Oh, I don't have a problem. I don't drink every night. You guys drink every night. That's crazy. So, which is ridiculous first and foremost and judgy, which is not the person who I want to be Mm -hmm. first and secondly. And then also too, it made me really look at, okay, yeah, no, I don't typically drink during the week, but then I started to be like, Hey, Chris, grab me a bottle of wine on your way home from work. And I was starting to drink during the week and i was like it's easy to do yeah yeah and, and I, I also want to do just a blanket disclaimer here that like everyone's different oh, everyone like, is different and having yeah. a glass of wine every no. night when you get home from work doesn't mean that you have a no. problem like examine what works for you and like what's good for you and how do you feel like because i mean i've got a, a spiked agua fresca in front of me right now right. and like i i probably am going to have glasses of wine throughout the week but what I was saying to you earlier is like what it is, is just being aware because mm-hmm. I think you become that frog in boiling water. If you're unaware, if you're just letting things happen and you're not being mindful of your consumption, I think it's a problem because I feel so much anxiety about giving it up mm. is that that is what is making me, um, think that I ha- I have to take a pause well, because you, you're using it as a band-aid I am right and like when you take that band-aid off you're going to have to deal you're with exposing things. that wound you're gonna have to feel the feelings yeah. that you've been trying to cover up and like that's scary for anyone and like when you said that you feel weak because of this thing everybody does something to cope like we all have to survive yeah and it's fucking hard and 
sometimes you need help and now you've realized that like the thing that you've been using to help you isn't helping you anymore. No, and I think it's really hurting me. Right. I think that I'm thinking that I can't be funny or I can't be social or can't have friends or can't have a boyfriend or that I'm not interesting without like a glass of wine or something in me. And you know, like here's something that someone told me once that like really helped me. You have done exceptionally well because whatever you have done has led you to survive to this point. And that's difficult to do. So you're, you've won already because you've made it this far. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so whatever you've needed to do to make it this far, that's okay. The important thing is that you've recognized that these things aren't helping you anymore and you have to find something else that's going to help you. And it's just scary. You know, I think about like, you know, I made that decision this morning that like, I really need to pause on my drinking. And I was like, how is that going to affect my relationship with my friends, my relationship with my um, new boyfriends? Like it's such a ingrained part of how we live our life. And Mm -hmm. it's scary to say like, Oh, this is something I have to do for myself. Like, how is that going to affect? Because it is, you hit the nail on the head. Something about alcohol, it makes people really uncomfortable because I think that it makes people think about their own relationship with it. And, and it's uncomfortable for people. And so I'm like, I don't, I don't care what anybody else does. It really doesn't. Um, this is what I have to do for me. But I'm like, at the same time, I'm scared of the way it's going to affect, you know, everything. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? We've, I think we've that's... talked many times on this podcast about how wonderful our friend group is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're going to love and support you. But it's telling to me to <laughs> just to watch you cry. I'm sorry. I I want you to feel supported no matter what your decisions are. That's right. And I think as a friend, it makes me look at my own actions as not supportive and and that hurts me to have hurt you and i don't i it, which is ridiculous to no. put this on myself <laughs> and make it about me and it's not about me and no. i and i know that but it, it really does make me look at the way how how do we make you feel if we if you can't feel supported to make that journey and i feel like i need to do better as a friend to you to make you feel that you can be comfortable enough to do that and that it's not fun, Christina drinking that makes me your friend. It's that's right, Christina that makes yes, me your friend. That's right. Alcohol is just a, a layer of sometimes the thing we do, yeah. and it has nothing to do with how I feel about you, and it has nothing to do with, you know, how we hang out together. And I, I see what you're saying, and I, I, I hear that, mm-hmm. and I, I think that that's, it, it hurts me to see you feel this way. Yeah. Um- I thought it was important and I wanted to talk about it on the podcast just from the the lens of I do think that this is something that happens when you when you are dating like how you um it was the thing for me dating like when I saw people's profile they're like oh I don't drink I was like swipe left <laughs> like you're not going to be any fun and so then I think of that mm. now when I'm like oh, okay like I'm not going to be drinking so am I not going to be fun anymore you, put that on you know what I mean yeah. And it's just, it's layered, layered, layered. Well, and I, you know, I just, I just want to take a pause. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's a permanent thing. I just know that for the past two years, this habit has gotten progressively like worse for me. And it's not, it's not making me feel good mentally, physically. Um, I just, I just need to take a pause. And I know we all listen to MFM. So I think that that really um, sunk in like George's journey giving it up for January and it just I thought about our own like sober October how much like I cheated and justified Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all kinds of things to myself and I'm like I I need to pause for a month I really need to just literally like see what happens and then and then go from there you know we'll see how it feels but when it's exciting too and I think that that's kind of something that like you should frame it that way as like this is 
going to be something exciting that opens you up to new things. Like imagine like you've got more time because sometimes I do think about like the amount of time I spend drinking or in drinking related activities. And I'm like, Oh God, you could have a whole new hobby. <laughs> really? I, yeah, it's true. Knitting or something. You know, and, yeah. um, I think that that's like awesome. I think that you are going to find so many new things about yourself. And that's great. And also for me, a big part of why I wanted to do Sober October in the first place was because I do think it's important to continue to challenge yourself and to see what you're capable of and how strong you really are, you know? And so like, I'm excited for you. I think that it's going to be a really good, very cool journey for you. The challenge for me, I think, I think the even bigger challenge than not drinking will be still going and being social that's yes. what i was just gonna say yeah. you can't i don't want you to lock on yourself. yourself up yeah. in a, a, a cave to not drink right and i want you to feel like you can be supported to come do all the things that you've always done mm-hmm. with us yeah and and not feel the pressure of drinking We're and gonna i think that's where we order you friends. all the shirley temples dude <laughs> all like all, all the drinks that like because because you do like, there's a big there's an element of that of like Honestly, what do I do with my hands it, now? Yeah. And you know what? It's, yeah. it's so weird. But when we were, I think whenever we were at that networking thing, whenever I wasn't drinking, I needed to go have a drink in my hand. Mm. And honestly, there's this weird like placebo effect that can happen. Yeah. Like get a soda water yeah. and just walk around with it and a lime. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, it's not alcohol, but I bet you all those things that you feel like come out of you when you're drinking right. will still come out of you because right. it's it's a mentality. It's a mindset. It's not, it's not the booze. The yeah. booze isn't what's doing it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. It's wow. like Dumbo's Ooh. feather. You guys, uh, <laughs> that's heavy. I well, know. <laughs> uh, it got dusty in here. I'm so sorry. I should have cleaned better before you guys came over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh man! No, important though. It's an I important think- conversation to have, and especially within the realm of of dating or any social activity, it's it's hard out there, you guys. Like, yeah. Yeah. especially now in the society that we live in now, where we're so disconnected, and we don't oftentimes have those very human connections to people. And most people don't even know how to have a conversation. Well, so yeah. making yourself vulnerable and forcing yourself to be put in a situation where you have to have a conversation with a stranger. Yeah. Like, I felt like I had to have at least like a glass of wine in order to even like feel comfortable doing that. Which I you know? get completely. I totally get it. I totally get it. And I'm proud of you for recognizing what you need. Yeah. I think, I, I think it's, it's going to be good for me and, I think it will make me realize, you know, I don't need that. Mm-hmm. And and then you can and then do I it can responsibly go if you want to. If or I want like to. Occasionally yeah. if you want to. But I just want to see what it feels like because it's been a few years since I've really like had a break from alcohol. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I just I want to see what that feels like for my body and my spirit. So to reset. Yeah. Hard reset. Yeah. 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 I'm That's unplugging. Good. And then plug you back yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you tried turning it off and turning it back on? No, I haven't. So yeah, let's try that. <laughs> That's the, always the first step. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Oh good. Oh my oh, gosh. Well, welcome everybody. This is my worst date. I'm Cassie. I'm Keegan. I'm Christina. Hey, look at us. Hey. So I I talked about this. Um, we have another double date episode coming out for you guys. If that was something that you enjoyed the last time we did it, um, my podcast partner on Your Angry Neighborhood Feminist is going to be our guest, Madigan. So um, if you are a listener of that show, you should be excited to have like a crossover episode. But when we were recording that, uh, which will come out on the 24th, but when we were recording it, I talked about how I went and saw When Harry Met Sally last night mm-hmm. in the theater. And it was such a fun experience. I love that movie so much, but I was thinking watching it like on the big screen, I was just like, is, is Billy Crystal? Thank you. No, 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 (laughs) neither. I never thought Tom Hanks was either, but that was the 90s. I get that more though. I, I do get Tom Hanks more than, I I don't know. (laughs) I was very confused because he's, he's very funny. 
He's yeah. so funny in this movie that Which makes, it makes him attractive. It makes him attractive. He exactly. Is attractive. Like I want him to be with Meg Ryan because yeah. I'm like, I, I, I totally get it. I think that he's such an attractive he's got character. Self deprecating humor. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Which yeah. I love. But there is this thing of like 90s dudes. <laughs> the 90s really pulled one over on us. Yeah. Where who, they were who like, else? there's somebody else like that. Oh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton too. is yes. not hot. No, he's not hot. No, because yeah, no, that he should was be like in like Mary Kill right there. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> we're definitely with Billy Crystal, Tom Hanks, and nineties ones. Nineties. We, we can't do Tom Hanks because we've already done Tom Hanks before. So we got to think of another. Uh, I'm, wool I'm over sure the there eyes are guy. others. Like because the nineties just like they really. And even when I was watching When Harry Met Sally, the other friend that ends up with Carrie Fisher, I'm like, this fucking guy with his oh mustache? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, um, my God. Seeing a mustache, I told you guys I watched the I, Tanya. That guy's mustache. Wow. Galuli. Oh, my God. <laughs> fucking Galuli. Galuli stash. Who yeah. else from that time period? Christ. Can you guys think of? What other movies were out, like, at that time? I... I you know, like when it was like those. I don't know. I'm I always think of what's his name, um, Kevin Costner. <laughs> Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. Oh was my god! Definitely, that's it. Kevin. That's fucking it. They Costner. tried. They to tried. Convince us he was. They sexy tried. AF. Robin Hood, Prince oh, of Thieves. Get, okay, but I love that movie. Okay, listen. <laughs> with his lack of an accent in that movie, it's. Oh my god. That. <gasps> Lord, what else is he in? He Lord. was in uh, with Dances the, with Wolves. Dances with Wolves. Yep. They oh, definitely man. tried to push the push narrative that Kevin Costner was attractive. Field of Dreams. Oh, oh yeah. They Field really pushed him hard. You know, um, Nicolas Cage, too. I was just like, God, oh. Christ almighty. <laughs> we the done, 90s, we did, remember when we did the Nicolas Cage characters? Oh, yeah, my that was God. Funny. That was the hilarious. The 90s were a mess, you guys. Like, Lord. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, no, we're we're doing that. Oh my gosh. I just looked up like nineties rom com though and the f- blasts from the past were brilliant. Well, uh, if you want to understand the mentality we're talking about, watch one episode of Seinfeld where you're okay. just like, What? <laughs> like Seinfeld. the the women these men are dating. Yeah, you're like, here. How? Like yeah. even Jerry, who's supposed to be like the hot one on that show, I He's guess. N- is not attractive. No. 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 And then George, I'm like you're complaining about okay. the women that you're dating. Hunty. You're complaining. <laughs> the fuck out of here. What's happening? <laughs> Get the fuck no. right out of here. No. Oh my god. But yeah. But I, I mean, I I say all that, but Billy Crystal, I love you. And I did actually in the movie. He's attractive in the movie because he's funny and he's yeah. witty and like he's charming. But physically, I was like, Meg Ryan is like She's so far gorgeous. out of your league. Yeah, that's oh, top man. rung. Yeah. Yes. The the things that they tried to get away with, like these mediocre they men. They did get away with. I they know. did. That's know. why none of us have good self esteem. Oh <laughs> man. You have to look like Meg Ryan just to get a Billy Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that mean for me? And, and it's also the reason why I'm get so the least mustache guy, aren't I? It's why so many men had such inflated egos and thought that yes. they could get away with shit that they are not. Hot no. enough to get away with. That's right. <laughs> Listen. Oh my god. Ooh. Yeah, dude. There was somebody. What was it? Was it somebody talking on a podcast? Oh yeah, I was listening to Beach to Sandy's uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day episode, and they were reading reviews of um, Valentine's Day stuff. And so um, Alexander found reviews of Tinder and Grinder and Amazing. Bumble, and the amount of just like angry men <laughs> who were just like angry that. <laughs> They didn't get matches oh, and no. stuff. It was just like reading those reviews. I was like, yeah, know okay. your worth. Yeah. You got to know your worth, guys. Someone was like, this app was just made for like mediocre women to feel oh. good about themselves. And I was like, yo, yo, <laughs> I got news for you, bro. How about you take that finger and turn it back around on yourself? <laughs> sir? Oh. Yeah. Not everyone is crazy. The common denominator in this is you. Maybe yeah. it's you. Maybe it's you. Hey, maybe Kyle. it's Maybelline. Maybe with this, it's, it's you. you. <laughs> what this book presupposes is maybe it's you. <laughs> oh, I love that. Maybe, you maybe know, when you too. point a finger, you've got, got three, three pointing, pointing back, back at, at you. yourself. Yep. Well, yep. Oh, my science, God. guys. That's just science. That's just science. Science, bitch. <laughs> All right. So fuck, Mary kill then. Okay. Um, Kevin Costner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Billy Crystal. <laughs> okay. And 
Michael Keaton. Okay. Oh, oh God, no! There's an awkward place where I like actually <laughs> love all of them. I, no, know. I do too. I do too. It's they hardwired into our psyche. Us. They got us. They got us hard. They, they really us. did. Had a huge crush on Michael Keaton. I know you've mentioned Batman, that before, and oh, which is so weird because I gone back and actually seen that, and I was like, "What the do fuck?" Do not revisit that movie. Do you not. let it live right where it does and never revisit it. In my it memory, again. <laughs> can we talk Don't about? Can we talk about that. the internalized um, self discrimination I must have to think that there's something in me that says no to a curly haired Batman. <laughs> Wow. And it's his it's, hair it's and me. his hairline. Look, it's me. I am I I'm a curly girl. Mm-hmm. I, I look, I love it. I love it. I love that journey for you. But sure. also no. 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 No one curly <laughs> there hair. There is something yeah. and like not curly haired dudes in general. Fine. Mm-hmm. Like fine. It's just something about a curly haired Batman. My brain is like mm. Okay. All right. <sighs> yeah, I I think I'm going to I think we're going to fuck Kevin Costner. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I, there's something about Dances with Wolves, mm-hmm. Kevin Costner, that makes me think it's it's going to be like rough hands. Mm. And I... It's going to be real sweaty. I feel like. like sweaty and, and like rough and tumble. And mm-hmm. I, I, I'm here for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also... What was the other movie I was thinking of with him in it? Um, Prince of Thieves for me. Yeah. Nailed it. I mean, come on. Didn't he do Prince of Tides? Waterworld. Think- Are you thinking about Waterworld? Water <laughs> that was it. Like, water- That's it. <laughs> okay, now it's ruined. <laughs> Damn it. I never watched All that movie. All you can think it's just him drinking his own urine now. And you're I like, never watched no. that movie. <laughs> I never did either. I never did either because it's a billion oh, years God. long. And I was I've just like, I it. have no interest in watching people battle on ski doos. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, and uh, you know what? I- I'm going to marry... I'm going to marry Michael Keaton. There's just something always like Mr. Mom. Yeah. It's like Mr. Mom multiplicity. Like mm-hmm. there's something always like devilish in his, his eyes, yeah. his, his expression is like smirkiness and stuff. He makes me think like we would do capers together. Yeah. He <laughs> looks fun and mischievous and I, I like it. And I, I'm just going to have to say like, I'm not one for, for silliness. And even though I love, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I don't like this silliness. And the way you said that <laughs> was like a real hardcore, like mom energy. Yeah, I'm just Billy Crystal. I, even though I love Harry and Sally, I just, I just, I get it. I, I think he's just too silly for me. It would be annoying to me. I and understand. I have to kill him. So I am going to do something a little different. Okay. I'm still going to fuck Kevin Costner. Mm-hmm. Not for any real reason other than like of the three. I feel like he's got the most experience. Mm-hmm. I feel like he is the most fuckable. I think he's definitely the sexiest of the Something three. Something about There's, fucking he's, he's Kevin sexy. Costner makes me think of a saxophone. Oh, yeah. Ruined. Mm, it's 80s. <laughs> There's yeah I, I yeah there is definitely gonna be some song? jazz burr, in the background. Burr, 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 burr. Sexy sax. <laughs> yes. I I really feel Still like he, I, I feel like and maybe it's from watching Dances with Wolves. I do feel like he is gonna like fuck you on like a cowhide rug in front of a fireplace. Yeah, like I get yeah. that kind of energy. I think mm-hmm. he owns a ranch too. Like I get rancher vibes, right? Which is fine. Yeah. Um. I I think. I think I, I would do it for this story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would do it. Um, I think I'm actually going to kill Michael Keaton. Mm. Got it. Because yep. I think that that, that devilish energy, it's funny how we're opposites in this mm-hmm. way. I feel like that would get annoying to me. There was something about watching him win awards for Birdman, which were totally deserved, uh, where he was giving speeches that, and this seems weird to say as an actor who lives in LA, but I was getting real strong actor energy. And sometimes that could be annoying. Mm. Like he's always on. Yeah. Or like, I feel like you, you think maybe you're smarter or deeper than you are. And so you like that thing where I, I I think he's, he's probably a fine person. I'm not trying to shade him. I'm just saying the vibes I'm getting. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm probably going to kill Michael Keaton. Or he's like one of those people that talks about like obscure, like German films from the forties. You're like, (laughs) you're like, I, you, and also you saw it once 
probably sir. or right. you watched a youtube video <laughs> where they talked about it so now you feel like you can have talking points at parties yes. like you're that type yeah um oh. so i don't i don't know and maybe he's not like that at all maybe i know not. probably well, not um but I think I'm going to marry Billy Crystal. <laughs> okay. Because I think it would be fun. <laughs> like, there you go. I think he's funny. We, I've said before on the podcast that like my number one thing is I have to be with somebody who makes me laugh. Mm-hmm. Because I think that I can get to in my own head mm-hmm. about things. And so it'd be nice to have somebody who is witty and funny. And like, you know, I'm loving that the Oscars don't have a host, but I, I loved I loved when Billy Crystal hosted. I thought I he was too. a great host. Um, and so I think we're going to have a, just a fun time. I yeah, love Steve keep me laughing. House. I was down for that. Oh yeah. I, I love, love Steve, Steve Martin, Martin too. Ugh. I, uh, gosh, I have such a soft spot for Billy Crystal as well. Because you're right. He's so fucking funny. And of the three, I feel like he's a real city guy. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah. we're going to get oh. to live in a city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know yes. I mean? You're That's probably going to live in New York. We're, we're not marrying Kevin Costner. Oh, yeah. no. I'm not. I can't. I'm not a ranch hand. No, 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 no. Yeah. He's going to. Yeah. I don't no. like the smell. <laughs> no, it stinks. <laughs> I, I come from a ranching family and uh, a farming family, and I don't, I don't really mind it. But look, that's like a that's like an old me plan, maybe. Like I'm, I'm too young. That's a never me plan for me to go is. live on a ranch with you. I'm a city girl. Yeah, city you know. Girl. Oh wait, you guys aren't watching I like, Succession. I are like you? visiting the country. I do love animals. Oh, I, I love do it. love like horses. Yeah, I do. And... I do too. But like you guys aren't watching Succession, right? Uh-uh. No. 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 Oh, okay. There's for people who are watching Succession, I get real Connor Roy vibes from from Kevin Costner. I don't watch Succession, but just from the name alone, I think I get what you're saying. He's he's the <laughs> he's the oldest son and he's played by the guy from Ferris Bueller, the friend Cameron from oh, Ferris Bueller's yeah. totally. Yeah totally yeah. know what you're talking about because yeah. i have watched enough of it and that and he's you... like super rich but yeah. he's like that kind of like super rich that's like i'm not like the other rich people i own a ranch in new mexico right and you're like oh fuck off yeah you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah. okay i am going to do 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 what am i gonna do i am gonna fuck kevin costner i think you have to yeah it's so fucking sexy to me and it is the prince of uh it's... uh prince of thieves <laughs> it's that robin hood it i don't care what anybody says that movie for, i could quote every fucking line that's, that's awesome that is so movie. funny that's to me that so that's so the dumb. movie that you can I, quote whatever <laughs> no i'm not judging you i just think it's funny i i also don't think kevin Costner's sexy i i there's something about him in dances with wolves that i really yeah. liked there's a there's yeah. a rugged energy there's an yeah. energy there yeah, yeah yeah for sure um oof i think i'm gonna do the same as you keegan i think i'm going to kill Michael Keaton, which is actually shocking to me because I've always been a big Michael Keaton fan. I yeah. like him. I like his movies. But you're right. There's something pretentious about him. Yeah. And there's something very disarming about a Billy Crystal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's fun and he's funny and you want to go to parties and drink yes. champagne with him and his friends. Yes. Because here's the, the thing. city and here's that's the, the thing, life. The difference between bringing... A Michael Keaton or a Billy Crystal to a party. Ah, yes. There mm-hmm. it is. Right. Yeah. Where I'm like, yeah, Michael Keaton is going to corner one of your friends oh, and God. make them talk to you about like yes. fucking the age of the wine that they're drinking or Ooh, something like yeah. that. Whereas like Billy Crystal's going to fucking kill at Pictionary. He's going to work the room. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. yes. He's going to work the entire room. Yeah. But see, yeah. For me, I'm I'm kind of a Michael Keaton person in that like my, my thing. I mean, I, I do want to be with somebody funny, but I... I'm a fucking talker conversation. Yeah. Like I yeah, need yeah. that's, that is my like, um, not just my love language, but also like what turns me on mm-hmm. like a good conversation. conversation about something. I, I have to, that's what gets my libido going. That's what I feel like, like Michael Keaton could have a good conversation. Yeah. With you. If you could get okay, him deep. to, mm-hmm. if you could get him to shut down the pretension, like, and just like, really really I, get uh, in on something i, I bet you that. he could have a good conversation with billy you. crystal could do the same thing though he seems he, like he the could kind too, of guy who could do could do get you a man that can do both yeah yes yeah. yes <laughs> get you a man who can do both i do feel like billy Chris, crystal could do it too it just 
it's it's which direction are you going to want to have to pull them back from right yeah. because you're going to have to both of them you're going to have to like yeah. rein, rein it, it in, in yeah in order for them to get focus yeah right you know so it depends on which i love how side. none of us are we're all on the same page about kevin costner because <laughs> i don't care about talking to him no I don't either. No, no, yeah. no, me neither. Uh, we, we, we did not yeah. touch base at all on his personality. No, no <laughs> we personality. Didn't. Because, yeah. You don't need a personality. To be honest, isn't it weird that, like, he's been in the game for as long as he's been in the game, it's and wild. I have no idea what he's like as a human being. <laughs> like, don't at sense. all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. When it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. You know, and he seems like a, a perfectly fine person. All yeah. of these people seem fine. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Nice guys. Don't at me about <laughs> Michael Keaton or his curly hair, okay? I like his hair. I think his hair is beautiful. Well, he doesn't have any now. I was just surprised. Yeah. Mm. Well, you guys want to take five and then we'll come back with stories? Yeah. Sounds good. And we're back. Yeah. I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get in there. Gotta get it in. Okay. I'm going to go first. This one comes from a listener. And uh, her the title of her story is My Worst Very Short Relationship. First and foremost, this is, I thought this was super funny because it's got so many <laughs> layers and it just is the, it's, it, you guys, it's, I feel like okay. there's, there's things about it that are super relatable. It's that before you realize that you can be like, fuck politeness. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I, I'm still pretty much in that place. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay. So the story says, Hey, love the podcast and thought I would share with you my worst experience with a boy. I'm from the UK, by the way. So sorry if I, anything I say sounds weird or is confusing. Also, sorry for how long this is. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 18 and had only ever had one boyfriend at school who I only went out with because I was super flattered that someone finally fancied me as Hi. I was kind of awkward and <laughs> Are <shy>. you me? <laughs> exactly. Because that I went on dates with people that I'm like, as a grown up, I'm like, I never should have mm -hmm. or would go on a date with that person. But I was so flattered that anyone asked me out that I was like, <laughs> okay, it's fine. Sure, <laughs> sure. Maybe this is all I'll ever get. <laughs> that there are so many, Keegan, you're going to feel this story. Oh. Anyway, by the, by the time I was 18 and able to go out and drink and get dressed up, I was much better looking, but still had no confidence. <laughs> Keegan, <laughs> stop writing stories to us. <laughs> just because you put in fancy words that are British doesn't make used, me not know. I used a you. bunch of views <laughs> in my words. <laughs> Calured. <laughs> I was at the only, quote, club in my very small, basically a shit pub with two for one meals in the day and they push the tables out of the way to make a dance floor at night. This place is usually full of 18 year old girls being stared at by middle aged men as they dance. Yikes. So I was having an average time with my friends. I was having an average time. <laughs> the best. Yes. Oh my God. I want to start so many stories like that. I was having an average time. <laughs> I love it. I'm pretty drunk and some guy starts talking to me. Again, I'm flattered that someone finds me attractive and I'm drunk enough to give him my number. The next morning, I have zero memory of what he looked like, but he seemed to be pretty convinced that I was super into him and kept texting me. Well, that doesn't take much, mm -hmm. as we've said. Yeah. <laughs> He told me that he was in the hospital and I should come visit him. Um, oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to have their first date with a guy who's in the hospital bed, possibly surrounded by his family? Over a hospital food? Oh, no, oh, thank you. There's nothing worse. So I declined. Do you want some of my Jello cup? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so I declined, but I felt sorry for him for being in the hospital, so I continued to speak to him. <laughs> this was a mistake, as he then assumed that we were a sure thing. When he got out of the hospital, he asked me to meet up with him. And although I was too fussed, I wasn't too fussed about him. I felt bad and I felt like I had led him on. So I agreed to it. Plus, he had, he could have been cute as I still couldn't remember what he looked like. <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. Here we go. So we went for coffee. Can you send me a selfie, please? <laughs> From your hospital bed? <laughs> well, when I got there, he was definitely not my type. White blonde hair, not but balding. So looked like 10 to 15 years older than he really was. Also 18. So Wait, not he, he was 18, and but balding. oh, honey. Aww. Oh, that sucks. I know. That's and so he also hard. has flesh colored hair. I know. 
that Which, doesn't help. No. Shave. Shave your head. Shave it. Just, just shave be bald. Head, it's okay. Be yeah. bald. It's fine. Yeah, because, look- dude, we know oh, that yeah. I like... I- I like a guy that has shaved his head, though. Yeah. A guy that s- still, like, has the, the hair and then the... I- I'm not a mm-hmm. fan of. But Oh, yeah. You mean, like, actually... As you date, like, a guy with, like, the most hair. Yes. Yeah. yeah he's got... Uh, yeah. Eric has a wall of hair. I know. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, like, I know what you're saying. There is something... Whenever it's the, At the 18, prince, though. the prince William, that's young. Where it's yeah. just like, honey, let it go. Yeah, like yeah. there's just no need to hold it. on to that like Friar Tuck situation <laughs> you've got going on. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> the date was fine, and we got on well enough. I got home, and he changed his Facebook status to in a relationship no. with me. <laughs> No. no i was too awkward to tell him no and somehow ended up with a motherfucking boyfriend after you, one coffee date. i'm i look i am not somebody who wants to ghost anyone but i would ghost this relationship so hard i because oh, i know no. myself and i'm like uh, uh at 18 yeah i would not have been able to to face oh, this no. oh she couldn't clearly I, just I, like, I i can't i don't Okay, I guess I'm in. Um, I guess I have a boyfriend. Shit. No, now you block him. You Ooh. block him on everything. Oh, he lived in a different town to me and didn't drive. Neither did I. So thankfully, I didn't see him too often. Maybe once a week. Oh my <laughs> god! How long did this go on? <laughs> once a week for how many weeks? I'll tell you later. <laughs> One time, he was at my house uh, at a house party, and he told me he would come and see me the next day. He literally came from the party on his bicycle without showering or changing his clothes. The bo smell was the worst. Oh no! I have never eighteen year old boy bo. <laughs> It's the worst I've encountered. My entire family was also at home and able to smell him. I oh. honestly didn't know how I was going to manage through a couple of hours of his stinky ass in my room. I was oh. so embarrassed, but somehow I still couldn't find the courage to break up oh, with him. Oh, she's me. Having zero interest in him. Oh, no. One time he invited me to come over to his house to meet his family and stay the night. I agreed to be polite. Oh, my God. Do Stop you guys, being polite. Do you guys remember the first time you broke up with somebody? Um, I gotta think about that. I I do, and it was yeah, I do, I do horrible. It yeah, I hated it. Yeah. I I had actually decided to do it like probably six months before I actually did right. it. Exactly, like you let it go. That's because right. You're, you're like, Fine. and when I finally did do it, I called him on the phone because I could not like, and also I was like fifteen, but like I called him on the phone. And I was shaking. I was oh so God. nervous because I didn't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt anybody. Right. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but I was also like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. That's, yeah. She's, she is a trapped bird. Okay. <laughs> she's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> when I got there, he asked me to go watch TV with him upstairs, but not in his room, in his parents. I was like, fine, whatever. Maybe their TV is better. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he starts trying uh, to try it on with me in his parents' bed, and I was cringing so hard and I just home? could not function. Yes. We talked about this last week. I don't want I no. don't Stop. want to do that. Stop, boys. Stop. I don't like the idea of touching something that other people touch. No. Like, Mm-mm. you know what I mean? I wouldn't like, have sex in your bed. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, yeah, yeah no, exactly. It's, it's like it, the, those sheets touch no, places. No, at 18. Like, mm, at 18, maybe, but not in your parents. Because it's like, uh, why would you want to have sex in your parents' Whoa. bed? That's some edible shit. It's weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> By the way, I heard edible. <laughs> and you're like, hmm? <laughs> That's not what I... <laughs> You mean like Oedipus? Yes. 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 Oedipal. Yeah. 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 Not edible. Yeah. In my yeah. head, I turned it into edible and I was like, that's gross. And then I was like, that's also gross. Oh, that's all of it. Yeah. All of all it. Gross. Gross. It's all gross. Um, we had an awkward dinner with his parents and then they showed me where I was going to sleep. I had assumed I was would be staying with him in his room, but his parents did not want us in the same room, despite the fact that we're both over 18. I had to sleep in a very small single bed in what essentially was a cupboard, which closet. Oh, Harry Potter yes. vibes. No. Oh, wish you think I had never gone to his house at all. The final straw was on a night out in 
in the same terrible little pub slash bar slash club that we met in. I had already tried to break up with him by this point, but he had basically wouldn't let me. So I said he could have one more chance. Fuck my life. Oh my God. He Dude. found out. <laughs> Wasn't I that was... an episode of Seinfeld where he tries to break up with her? I think it's George. Yeah. George like tries to break up with a woman and she's like, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he doesn't know what to do. So they just keep dating. <laughs> she's just like, no. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he found out I was going to be um, out. So he came out for the night out on his own just so he could quote bump into me he mm. saw me speaking with one of my brother's friends a guy i knew from school and then literally had me pinned up against the wall <gasps> screaming at me for flirting with other guy in front of him and essentially calling me a slut i honestly thought he was going to hit me i finally broke up with him after that and he sent me so much abuse online he called me a perfectic instead of pathetic and told me i quote broke his heart did i mention we were dating for like two months max oh my god wow. i was 18. like me i don't even know your middle name there is no way your heart is broken goodbye but <laughs> oh okay god. how many 90s movies did he watch oh yeah <laughs> that too convinced many. him too many that he was that owed wild? something from this relationship uh, that's wild dude i had a recovered memory during that of okay. my first sleepover at a guy's <gasps> house oh, oh god, man hey <clears throat> So, <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to say this. So, this is a shame receipt. It, it very much is. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, Christina's so, got her story for the day. I stayed over. I, I was dating this guy that um, was a summer camp counselor, and I <laughs> stayed over at his dad's house, and um, I had to sleep on the couch. I couldn't sleep in his room because we were we were under 18 at that point. So, oh. um. So I slept on the couch, but I got really nervous or something. I I I peed the couch. No, no. Christina. No, I I don't know what happened. I have I never had a bed wetting problem. It what it wasn't from drinking or anything like that. But I I I peed the couch. Oh, did you no. did you just flip the cushion? I had a down comforter. <gasps> And it was all over the down comforter and all over the couch. And this was at like 6.30 in the morning. The sun was just coming up. So oh I was no. like, You're in a what panic the fuck do I do? they're waking up. Yeah. So I, I put the dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> the dog peed on me. <laughs> no. So I, I put the down comforter in, in the washer. And then, yeah, I just flipped the cushion. Oh, girl. And it was a light couch. And... No. Down comforters you cannot put in the dryer. <laughs> but I put it in the dryer anyways. Oh, no. And then like got it out and like folded it and just like sat sat oh. on the couch, literally just like waiting for everyone to get up and they're like, Oh, you're up. I'm like, mm-hmm. So I'm oh, at I'm some point so they broke they for flipped you. they flipped no. the couch. Not while I was there, but I I know it. Like I was like, Well, I can't be with him long term because at some point they're gonna flip the cushion <laughs> and they're gonna know. <laughs> There's a big piss stain on the couch. Why well, would it have been you, though? Christina. That's weird. Christina. Oh, I'm no. so heartbroken for you because there is nothing. I don't know if there is another feeling that is equivalent to when you are in someone else's house. And you do something like and that. you do like, something like that. I was like an adult. I was like 17. Like one time, like... Have you ever like clogged a toilet in someone else's house? The um, amount of like sweating and panicking. Oh my god! Especially if it was a boyfriend <laughs> and you were in high school or something. Like, Ooh, yeah. It. Yeah. No. I, I had I had a friend who peed in a salad crisper <laughs> in the fridge. In the fridge. You know what I'm in the about? fridge. Your ass is cold. It's like open, like open the fridge, open the salad mm-hmm. crisper drawer, and I feel like piss. that's too many steps. <laughs> like I was, at, I was staying the night with friends. <laughs> We've gotten so far off track, I but I was staying the night with friends. Um, whenever I was just out of high school, and it was one of those things where like their parents were out of town, so everyone got together to party right. and stay the night there. And our friend who this man is about to be a father of two now. He's got a baby, and his wife is pregnant again. <laughs> But he got wasted and like sleepwalked and I walked past him 
peeing in the hallway <gasps> there was at the end of the hallway like oh, onto no. the carpet oh no not no. his house no. Oh, no it's like his friend's house no <laughs> my parents <sighs> still have the carpet in their their house that they um that they got my senior year of high school and they went out of town once and i i had the big blowout party and there's still like a spot on the carpet of like oh, i don't know why we we made a bunch of strawberry daiquiris Ooh, so there's a big strawberry daiquiri oh, they want to kill and you that's that's where the lazy boy goes <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh it's still no there. It's strawberry it's still there. daiquiri on that carpet immediately yeah that's yeah. my oh, god yeah. that's they such hilarious. a, such a so bitch. <laughs> amazing all right well I've got one from a friend of ours. She says she's finally writing a few in. Hey, ladies, I love listening to you guys and feel free to use any of the below stories if you want. I want to. So uh, she says, I had recently gotten out of a five-year relationship. My college boyfriend, my first everything, the guy I thought I was going to marry, living together at the works. Mm -hmm. After uprooting my life and moving from Marina Del Rey to North Hollywood, finding roommates, etc. I finally decided it was time to make myself get back out there. Yeah, you know, you kind of yep, got to yep. take care of, you know, your shit. And then you're like, all right. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah. I definitely went on dates with people who did not care that their shit was not together and still dated anyways. I but think you should get your shit together. I think get, you should. <laughs> mentally you get should. to a place where you can handle it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because even when you do, it's still a fucking lot to it's manage. It's so hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was working at the Cheesecake Factory at the time, and one of my customers, let's call him Clay, only because he was not important enough to actually remember his name, <laughs> mm -hmm. asked me out. I figured, why not? Having been off the market for so long, dating had changed. It appeared that texting, not even hearing each other's voices over the phone, was an exceptional form of dating, which I found dif difficult. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. yeah, no, I hate texting. As we set up our first date, I was getting more and more apprehensive about the whole thing, partially because I did not feel like I was getting a good sense of who this guy was through texting. Right. I don't know this guy. What if he's a serial killer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So always an acceptable <laughs> thought to have. Yeah, exactly. We watch so much true crime, dude. It, it, I get it. So I asked a group of friends of mine to go to the bar that we were going to go to to sit at another table just to make sure I make it out of the date alive. I feel like I could have asked you guys to do this. You would, we we would have. the wigs we and the sunglasses. We were waiting for you to ask us, actually. <laughs> like, wanted. Me and Cassie had a side text conversation. We were like, when is Christina going to let us tag along? <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> waiting for my invite. <laughs> oh, my God. That would have been fun. At first, they agreed. But when the day approached, they did not feel like going. <gasps> On my way out the door Rude. to the date, really? I was dreading at this point. I reminded them that if I end up dead, they are partially responsible <laughs> yep. and left. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Honestly, like, no. She needed me and Cassie. Yeah. Me, We'd have been there. We would have planned a whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would have brought, oh, like, yeah. fucking Bloody Marys in a thermos. Mm. There would have been, like, there would have been bandanas Wigs. involved. Small Wigs. binoculars. Scarves. Hair yes. scarves. Those small oh. binoculars that you get when you're in the opera. <laughs> I would have looked like fucking Jackie O. Like, it would have been, like, a headscarf. And a wig yes. and round sunglasses. The biggest. Real <laughs> Thelma and Louise vibes. Yes. Oval yes. sunglasses. I drove to the Marina Del Rey area where Clay suggested we meet from... <sighs> Marina Del Rey, North Hollywood. That's Ooh, not you close. You come to me, You're Clay. not geographically yeah. desirable. Not at all. I parked my car and met him outside his place a few blocks from the bar we were going to. As we walked to the bar, I immediately knew this date was a mistake. He began the walk, claiming that he owned a lot of property in the area Ugh. and in Vegas, <sighs> continuing to brag about his accomplishments. Oh, he's Mr. Big Shot. I hate you. I fucking Aww. hate people like that. Mr. Big Shot. That's all you have. If that's mm -hmm. the first thing that you're going into a conversation with, that's you don't have a personality. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what you have. Oh, he said we are going to this particular bar because he knew the bartender and he was going to hook us up. Okay, fine. We get there. He gets a table and goes to get our first free round from the bartender. He comes back with the drinks and asks me what my most embarrassing moment is. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't like that question in a first no. date. Interesting question. I tell him a story and then he says, Oh, that's nothing. Oh. And proceeds to tell me his oh. most embarrassing story. Oh, so he's story. a person who has to top you, too. Yeah. Oh, I fucking hate Mr. that. Mr. One-Up. Mm -mm, mm -mm. She thought she was going on a date with Mr. Big Shot. Now he's Mr. One-Up. Mr. One-Up. <laughs> who do you think you are? Mr. One-Up. 
Um, so then again, he goes, what's the most adventurous thing that I've done? I tell my story and then, oh, mine is way better than that. By this time, I'm already not feeling this date. So when the adorable waitress comes over to ask what we'd like to eat, I politely decline. He orders wings and a second drink. While we wait for his food, we have zero things to talk about. So we're sitting there twiddling our thumbs and commenting on how talented Michael Phelps is as he wins <laughs> Olympic gold medals oh, in the background. <laughs> everyone has had that situation when you're just trying to f- cling to anything yeah. in the room to yeah. make conversation oh, about. Like, you're like, I like, I like spoons. You like, like spoons? Did you know how long Michael Phelps' arms are? Have you seen that picture in time? <laughs> wingspan, <laughs> His right? wingspan is enormous. <laughs> Meanwhile, out of the corner of my eye, I see that a few of my friends have found a table at the bar. I guess the guilt trip of finding my dead yes, body in the morning right. works. Mm-hmm. Our waitress also happened to be their waitress. This will be important later. His wings arrive. Now, you have talked about good date food on the podcast before, and wings are typically not one of them. Nope. They are messy, spicy, all of the things. <laughs> not to mention, I'm a vegetarian, so watching him gnaw meat off the bone is a bit of a turnoff as someone who's not a vegetarian and likes wings i I sometimes have to check myself about how like savage i feel like it is (laughs) i'm like man yeah i'm like ripping me uh, and i do have to be like this is gross but it's delicious oh my you god know, I, and everyone makes fun of me because i use a fork to eat wings mm. and it, and that's why <laughs> it's like i feel better if i'm like using a fork to pull it off rather than yeah being like yeah. you know neanderthal oh yeah his it gets worse his hands are covered in sauce so i ask him if he would like a napkin he says no then proceeds oh. to oh. lick his fingers slowly and sexually while oh. making direct eye contact it's with not me. hot it's not sexy Ew. it's not sexy at all in <laughs> any way i'm so turned off also like i your buffalo sauce mouth is not coming anywhere near mine no. i love buffalo sauce i'll put that shit on everything but get away from spicy. me Wait, spicy it's I don't not want coming spicy near mouth. my mouth or anything else anything else get spicy mouth me. go away I excuse myself to the restroom, text my friends that this date is a disaster, question whether or not I made a bad decision by breaking up with my ex, if this is what's out there, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and return to my table to try to end this thing. Oh, it's so tough whenever, like, <laughs> you're really questioning, like, oh, God, Your I, decisions. Think I, made, I think I've made a, ter- a huge mistake. <laughs> I think I've made a huge mistake. It's the Job. <laughs> you have the Job moment. For us. I've made a huge mistake. I tell him I have a very early work phone call. Really? I work at the Cheesecake Factory. (laughs) Terrible lie, but whatever. I guess he was stupid enough to believe it. He finally finishes, and when the waitress brings the bill, he graciously says he will pay for it. Mind you, the bartender bought our first round, and I did not order anything after that. So he's going to get his own food and drink. (laughs) How kind of him to offer to pay for it. You piece of shit. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for buying your stuff. God damn. He pays the bill and says he wants to say goodbye and thank you to the bartender. I text my friends I'm going to ditch him and then I'll swing around and pick them up in my car. He walks me to my car and then asks if it would be presumptuous to ask me up to his room. Why, yes. Yes, Yes, it it would be. We part ways. I get in the car and scoop up my friends. My best friend asked me if I had a good time. I tell her no. She asked me if I'm sure. I ask her why she is asking. Remember that waitress that was our waitress as well as my friends? Uh Mm -mm. Well, they had told her we were on a first date and they were keeping an eye on us. So she was helping them get the scoop. When they were closing (gasps) their bill with her, she tells them that Clay asked the bartender to ask her (gasps) out for him while still on the date with me. He didn't even have the balls to do it himself and had the bartender Ew. to ask her for him. Yeah. What? So the fuck? Classless. Honestly. What? Like, I get it. They're not exclusive or anything, but you're it's on so, a date with somebody. A date. If, if you want a bar, go back. Yeah, exactly. Later. If you want to ask that girl out, go back later. Like, that's such a fucked up thing to do. It's so gross. Ugh. It's so gross. 
The next day he had the nerve to text me that he had a great time and wanted to see me again. And I ripped him a new one and deleted him. The joke is on him though. Years later, I wrote a one act comedy immortalizing the date and making him seem like an even bigger douche. If that was possible too bad. I didn't invite him to see the show. Shut up. Should have sent that Facebook invite. Exactly. Oh my God, dude. I, what people think is acceptable like Ugh. behavior to, uh, i think empathy is like really lacking in dating yes, today it yeah, is. honestly it is someone shared something to our facebook group that was like the reason why dating nowadays is so difficult yeah and i thought that so many of the points that they made were spot on right and like that's part of it it's like also there's there's this there's so many options and we're in this like swiping culture that it, in some people's brains, they're already on to the next. Yeah. Like they're on oh, to yeah. the next. They're on to the next thing. There's and they don't really care. Like better. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That like once things get hard, it's like no one no one wants to have like a, a real relationship anymore. It's just always that whole like grass is greener kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have to deal with this. I can move on to the next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it's like you're always going to be. Yeah. A lo- it's always going to be surface, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, Okay, so this is an email that we received. It says, okay, y'all, I discovered this podcast like two weeks ago, and I am hooked. Shout out to Drinkerinos for the suggestion. Oh, yay. yay. Drinkerinos. I love Drinkerinos. We love you guys. Uh, Listening the past few weeks has made me remember things I was hoping to forget. I love that this podcast just brings forth repressed memories. I don't remember the last time I thought about pissing on the couch i really you push that deep deep, deep down deep down <laughs> this is half a lifetime ago <laughs> so i'm sorry <laughs> it was me i do want to know what, what they thought in trouble for you like what if- <laughs> somebody's like who pissed on the couch because how are you often you flip over- couch cushions also what did they think of you washing the like duvet like that's such a weird thing for a teenage guest to do like wash their yeah and I I like folded it I don't know if they knew that I I washed it because it was like so early in the morning but I just like folded it and just put it put it on the couch and just like yeah and then I was just like literally they got up and I was just sitting on the couch like uh, can someone take me home now, please? <laughs> yes. Can I use your phone to call my mom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. Um, I have a few shitty dates, but this one is on another level. <laughs> So, when I was in college, I was feeling bored and lonely, so I downloaded Tinder. I talked to a few guys here or there, and nothing really panned out. One night, I was out at a, at a bar and got a text from this guy I had matched with and had a few conversations with him. He told me he was in the area and wanted to hang out. I was drunk, so I thought, fuck it, let's meet up. Yep. I was with my friends, and he was with his, so I figured I'd have an escape. Totally. Yep. Get it. Um, we meet up. He's pretty cute and seems nice. So whatever. We decided to go back to my apartment with my roommates. She clarifies. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. To have more drinks since the bar was closing. We headed to the bus stop to catch a bus back to my apartment. Sidebar. I went to Rutgers and the campuses are huge. So Mm -hmm. you basically took buses everywhere. And at this time at night, we called them the drunk buses. (laughs) (laughs) I think this is when I started to think maybe I'm not making a decision sober me would like. (laughs) But horny drunk in 21. So I went with it. I mean, beyond... I, I don't think that I was really a fan of any decision that I made after 130 in mm-hmm. the morning. Mm-hmm. I think that that was the cutoff for my, good my decision brain. making. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I liked anything I've done. Yeah. Your, that. your good decision making brain was like, good night. <laughs> I'm tired. Like clicks, yeah. Clicks the light. <laughs> tucked, like itself, the tucked itself <laughs> in. <laughs> it's like, bye. The rest of you has to handle this. <laughs> we finally get to my place and have a beer or two before we decide to head upstairs we go into my room and he pulls me into a kiss sort of aggressively but i was into it he was a good kisser so i was kind of excited at the time i wasn't very experienced so i was at least looking to get some type of action but i made it very clear that we weren't going to go all the way yeah he said cool and we went on I started touching him, and after a while, he took off all his clothes. I mean, everything. But as naked in my bed, I was 
fully clothed. Oh, oh no. that's weird. It's that's weird. So I was like, weird. wait, that's not, that's not weird. And then I was like, but, but it's weird when it reminds one me, person is, and it, you're like, it reminded me of that. Um, I fucking love that SNL sketch with Will Ferrell where he's the <laughs> teacher. No, where he's the drama teacher oh. and he's talking to the like kids in the drama class and he's like, you two, are you guys dating? You two read as such virgins. And he's like, the kid's like, we're making progress. So far, we've gotten to my shirt off, her shirt and pants on, my pants off, my socks off, her socks and shoes on. And so he's <laughs> like, so you're fully naked <laughs> and she is fully clothed. <laughs> I do not know this one. I'll, I'll share hilarious. it with you because I you, want to watch that. I fucking love Will well, Ferrell. We can watch it after this yes. because if you were oh a God. theater kid, you know this <laughs> sketch. It is so real. It is so real. Oh but anyway, it made me think of that. And I'm like, I'd be so awkward if this man is <laughs> naked. <laughs> like, buck ass naked and you have all your clothes on. You're like, your shoes are still on. Yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. clothed oh. I am. Oh my, my, God. my hoodie's on. My jacket's on. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. no. Layers, layers, layers. Um, yeah, she said, not even my shirt off, nothing. I turned around. <laughs> I turned around and looked back and bam, naked. <laughs> I love that idea. It's like she turned around to put something in her purse. She turns around. He's like completely naked. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Another sidebar. <laughs> this dude has the biggest fucking balls <gasps> I have ever seen in my life. Oh wow! She's like, like I thought something was wrong. Oh dear! Wow. Oh, no! Oh dear. dude, I've been, I've been with the big balls. <laughs> it is, it is, um, disarming. Alarming. It is, it's, it's alarm. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> I, it, you just weren't expecting it. You just took a second to get used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, they're not putting those in. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. Fine. At, at most, it's just gonna door knock a little bit. You're gonna be like, <laughs> Come and knock on my door. Come and knock on my door. I'm oh so sorry. I, I, oh, man. Sometimes. We're not drinking, guys. Wow. Oh, um, God. Anyway, I continue with the touching, and he starts to push my head down. Nope. Get the fuck out of here. Indicating he wants some oral. I say, nah, I'm not feeling this, because, bitch, you can ask. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Use your mouth. Don't oh, push wait, my fucking words. head down, to which he doesn't respond and just pushes me down again. I stop, sit up, and say, dude, no. He says, okay, then flips us around so he is on top of me. He starts awkwardly grinding on me, asking if it feels good. Again, I am fully clothed. <laughs> and he's naked. No. That's so My. awkward. He's like dry humping her jeans. It's weird. He hasn't even touched me. I was like, uh, sure. And thought, what the fuck am I doing? He Ugh. asked me if I was sure I didn't want to have sex. I looked at him and said, yep, I'm fine. He literally hopped off of me and then uh, and the bed and goes, oh, man, I have to take this phone call. <laughs> <laughs> From where? You don't have any pockets. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Be right back. <laughs> God, this call. Nude. You couldn't be more obvious. I know. Uh, he bends down to put on his pants, and that's when I see it. This dude has an ass tattoo right near his bow. <laughs> a fucking ass tattoo, guys. And to make matters worse, it was a New York Giants tattoo. <laughs> and I'm a Jets fan. <laughs> So he's got a Wait. New York Giants tattoo above his butthole. Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh my God. I'm a sports fan. Oh my Is that God. where you put a tattoo of a team you like? I know, I know. right? Hey. Oh my God. I think he, he lost, lost a bet. bet. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Yes. Like mine's. He also, lost a bet. too, we have a friend from New Jersey. Who has a butt tattoo? So my ass was like, "Wait, what?" Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. But his is on his ass cheek, which mm -hmm. I think True. is different. It is different from being on your butt crack. Yeah, like, how uh, painful like, that would be. A too. low tramp stamp, like Oof. right above the butthole, seems like. 
<laughs> and she said it's huge too, which I'm like, <gasps> what? Oh, no, that's oh, no. fucking wild. And she's a Jets fan. I think that's so funny that she's like, oh no, this no, last sir, straw this is no. over. It's the last straw. I hear you. I, I basically you. said, what the fuck? And he goes, oh yeah, I love football. This is my favorite tattoo. And I'm thinking, I'm so glad this dude is not inside of me. <laughs> Oh my god! You, oh, no. I know that fucking feeling where you're like, oh, no. I dodged a bullet. Dodged a bullet. Oh my dodged god! A bullet. I can't believe. I'm so glad Wolf. I didn't fuck this guy. Yep. Um, but, uh, he puts on his pants and runs out the door. After about five minutes, I realize he isn't coming back, oh, and I jaw. go downstairs oh. to dish to my roommates about how fucking oh. awkward that was. That's when I realize the dude left his hat. I think, oh, we'll throw it out, and then I hear a knock on the door. The dude came back for his hat, but instead of saying that, he was like, oh, yeah, let's continue up. But instead of saying that, he was like, oh, yeah, let's continue upstairs. And I think, uh, okay, and follow him up. No, No. girl, just be like, I got your hat. No, thank you. Here's your hat. Did you make that phone call? Yeah, I'm I'm tired now. I'm going to bed. Bye. He gives me a half-assed kiss, grabs his hat, goes, oh, shit, another call. It's my brother. (laughs) And runs back outside. I shut the door, lock it, and block him on Tinder. Never saw or spoke to him again. <laughs> oh my god. She said, you can use my first name. This story is fucking hilarious, and I have no shame in it. Love, love, love the podcast. XO, XO, Deanna, D. It's pronounced Deanna. Uh, you have no idea how many times I've been called Diane, Deanne, Donna, or something else. <laughs> <laughs> so she's also our our latest oh, uh, yeah. patron. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my god, that story oh my was amazing, fucking hilarious, oh, yes. oh, so my fucking god. funny. Oh, oh my Christ. god, my god, because there's so many times wow. I've also thought like, God, I cannot believe that that guy's been inside me. Oh that, no, that like yeah. there's something so touch me. so great about when you like escape without that and you're like and then that moment where you're like that's when i go like heat up tater tots or something like that and i'm like treat yourself treat yourself yeah that's a treat yourself moment yeah (laughs) i earned this i earned this i made good decisions tonight yeah i can make i can have one cheat meal (laughs) yeah exactly okay are you guys ready for my crazy in love yes super ready good Lord, it took me forever to find a crazy in love this week. I don't know why. I was just so, I was so enmeshed in a work project. That's part of it. So Mm -hmm. I kind of got like my head was really stuck in this like one place that I was like, okay, I need to come out of this hole and then get into. It it can be really hard. Yeah. 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 So this story actually has been on my radar for quite some time. Um, I, I think I initially heard this from, it's weird because I, I went into it being like, I want to do a Vegas story. I don't know why. I think that we talked about doing Vegas Christmas again recently. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. Vegas has been on my mind. Um, and I, I feel a- like we sat on our Vegas stories because we had intended to do a live show there. Oh, and okay. so we we had, like I had some that I was like, I didn't do them because I was like, oh, we might be doing a live show. But we're, we have no plans on that now. So yeah. it opens us up. It's technically only like touches a, a tiny part of Vegas. It's, so it's not technically a Vegas story, I wouldn't call it. But mm-hmm. I do think... Here's the big picture. Keeping it casual. Um, our good friends from Keeping mm-hmm. It Casual, which are based in Las Vegas, I am pretty sure that they are friends with one of the girls that's in this story. Ooh. Ooh. So um, shout out, hey, Brie. I'm pretty sure that you guys were telling me if uh, I'm pretty certain that I heard part of this from them, too. So this story is about um, I don't know if you guys remember the show Megan Wants a Millionaire. Oh, God. Megan wants a yeah. billionaire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh. So this is about the story of Ryan Jenkins, who was on that show, and the murder of his wife, Jasmine. I, this is ringing Fiera. some very, like, Fiora, faint, sorry. distant bells. Like, yeah. I feel like there's something here. I'm excited. So we'll start with Ryan Jenkins, just to kind of give you a little backstory about him. Ryan Jenkins is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and he um, came from a wealthy family. His parents are pretty rich. His dad was a a wealthy businessman. Um, He himself was, you know, kind of dabbled here and there in different outlets. Um, He also was a real estate agent, also fairly wealthy and had his commercial pilot's license. I mean, he, he had done some things. Um, He was uh, really though, his main goal in life, he wanted to be 
a movie star. He wanted to come to, oh yeah, you and everybody else. Bro. Welcome to the fucking club, <laughs> sir. Yeah, mm-hmm. You and everyone yeah. else, right? Yeah. So he decided that he was going to move to the States and try his hand at acting. Um, where he did end up, though, was he ended up in Vegas. And during his time in Vegas, which, you know, close. You're, yeah. You're, you're close. And look, there's lots of great, no shame. There's lots of great shows in Vegas. There's a lot of incredible performers in Vegas. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, and and he's kind of, he already has kind of, you know, a bit of wealth behind him. He's He's got this kind of big spender attitude. And, you know, Vegas really does attract those kinds of people. It does. So it, it's a, it makes sense. A good place to start. Get your mm-hmm. feet wet. See what's around. Well, it just happens that he ends up at a pool party um, in Vegas and he meets these producers for a reality TV show. And he happens to tell them, oh, yeah, you know, I I have money in this night. They're like, hmm, interesting, because we're actually casting for a show that we think you'd be perfect for. He's got a great personality. He's charismatic. When did this show come out? Dude, so it was like 2009, I of think. Of course it was. The, there was no, wait, such a show. weird string of reality TV shows yeah, that were like, just like marrying, a, who wants to marry a yeah, millionaire? Yeah, the millionaire matchmaker. Mil- yeah. And there, they were just like, we had no shame in the, in the 2000s. We had no shame when it came to reality TV. Like I was just thinking the other day about like, I watched fucking Rock of Love, Flavor of Love. I watched yeah. women physically fight them, like fight each other oh, over right, yeah. Flavor of Flav. You remember like uh, Bad Girls Club? Oh, oh yeah. girl, yeah. yeah. Tila some... Tequila shot at love. Yep, there's where some she made real all tragic her... ass shit. Tila Tequila's one. She made all of her contestants sleep in the same bed together. It was one giant bed because she was yep. bisexual, so she had men and women on the show, and she made them all sleep in one huge bed. Well, I'm sure she didn't. I'm sure production. I don't care. Yeah, it's, it's just it's so, so silly. Gross. It's, so gross. it's just so dumb. Like yeah. honestly, the the whole idea, like these reality shows were. I mean, they still are. They're they're so it's so trash. I love it. However, yeah, it's very <laughs> very like, produced. Trash. There's something there was some real levels of VH1 in right, TV right. at the time because I feel like there are levels to this, yeah. right? Like not to say that any of it is good, right. but there is a difference between like your bachelor still trash. But there's a difference between your bachelor and your fucking flavor of love. Right. Okay. That feel- went on for like three or four seasons. I'm like, honey, if you didn't find your flavor in the first three. Right. <laughs> but also, it happen, bro. like, Kid Rock was popular at the same time. True. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like that gives you the Our vibe levels. of oh. that era. Oh, yeah. What was it? <laughs> Uncle Cracker? Oh. Yeah, and Papa Roach. Just, Papa Roach. We should yeah. just call that whole that whole period Uncle Cracker. It was it was the age of Uncle Cracker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the dawning of the age. What of what is that? Where it's like eras with like dinosaurs. Yes, yes. yes. Uncle Cracker. Yes. Uncle Cracker era. Wow. Yes, we allowed men <laughs> to just look as oh. rank as possible, yeah. and we were like, "This oh, is God. fine." The whole, uh. the whole universe just smelled of Axe body spray at the time. Oh, totally. God. Uh, anyway. So, uh, during this crazy ass time, they are, they are, they're filming like the trashiest of trash television on VH1 yep. specifically was running like a, a rash of these. Yes. One that yes. you mentioned is one that Megan herself started out on. Megan Hauserman was on Rock, uh, Rock of Love. Rock of Love. And, um, I think this is who Brie and MJ know is Megan from Rock of Love. Okay. And then that the show was made after. I'm pretty sure. They'll tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway, so this they during the show, she had kind of made a bit of a name for herself because she was like, look, I just want to meet somebody who's got money and kind of they so the producers are like, we got a spin off. Those you. people always <laughs> yeah. they always do well on yeah. those shows, mm-hmm. man. New York got her own spin off too mm-hmm. from uh from Flavor of Love. That's yep. I know, right? You know, so it's, it's, it's just be like, honest and like they'll give you a show. <laughs> I, and or not even like who knows if that was actually truly her MO at the time or she was just like, this could get me my next step. And I think that a lot of people were looking at like, how salacious can I be to get that next show? And and you are. You're looking for that next train ticket to the next thing. You never yeah. know what could. They're hustling. Yeah. yeah. And hey, good for you. Hustle away. I get it. Make uh, Yeah, secure yeah. the bag. I think there were rarely people on Rock of Love that really, really were in love with Brett Michaels. Oh, God. Except no. for maybe Hollywood Heather, who you know I what? I have know to, as well. I have to say, I, I believe that there were people who had this kind of crush on Brett Michaels before I'll believe that those women actually wanted to fucking catfight over Flav of Flav. Oh. Does anyone 
looked at Flavor Flav. Thank you. <laughs> like, he's, his face looks like it melted. <laughs> What's happening? That man has like 20 children with like six different women. Oh, and I'm like, how? How? <laughs> how? How you, indeed. You, how, you, you, you anyway. don't got money, do you? Yeah. I mean, uh, he... So much money going out. Mm. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> so Ryan films this reality show. He makes it to... He makes it to like a runner up basically. And um, there's 17 out of 17 bachelors. um, She, she really does get down to the the last minute. Oh, before I go any further, let me kind of tell you where I got a lot of this information from. First and foremost, I got um, a lot of information from true crime um, by Aphrodite Jones episode called casting a killer. Um, I actually listened to uh, a podcast called moms and murders. Oh, Okay. Mm -hmm. I've heard about that. Pretty sure Mm -hmm. that's what it was called. Yeah. Hopefully I said that right. If not, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, And then the other one was uh, Billy Jensen's other podcast. What's it called? First Degree. Billy Mm -hmm. Jensen hosts with a couple girls and they, uh, a couple women. And on the First Degree, they interviewed somebody, uh, another one of the girls that was on the show with them. Okay. So it was, um, she actually said she was like that Megan really fancied ryan and if it had been up to like her real she, for, like in, she actually really real life, liked she would, really would have probably chosen him to be the winner mm-hmm. but she feels that like the production company saw that there could be a spinoff or he could go on to another you know another direction i, I do feel like that ha- i mean i know that happens like even if they don't out and out say it they mm-hmm. will dissuade you because they're looking 10 steps ahead in 10 different directions and like their priority is not your happiness or yeah. mm-hmm. or you actually finding love you know yeah, right now well ryan didn't take though being cut from the show very well. He he kind of had a little bit of an ego kick from that. So I think like him being cut from the show, he kind of felt a little gutted. I think that he may have really in one way or another, whatever it is, may have actually wanted this to go someplace, but also too again, just the ego kick. Hey, look, if your ego is taking that much of a hit from rejection, on a you reality show. You should not be an actor. <laughs> oh. Oh. A <laughs> hey, fucking man. Because Facts. like, yeah, if if that is something that is going to like make you spin out, mm. honey, like it, every day place. is rejection. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. But he does, the thing that he does do is he's like, I want to take this, I'm going to ride this wave as far as I fucking can. So mm-hmm. he's like, so he goes back to Vegas and he's like, hey, everyone i was just on a reality show and he's like going out and like kind of braggadocious like hey guys i was on a reality show hey guys i really feel like that's not show. something to brag about i don't know mm-hmm. it, i guess but i guess if you're trying to spin it into the next thing you never know whose ears that hits who gets excited about that and this and you was know before instagram where like True. nowadays like if you're on the bachelor and you like, immediately yeah, yeah exactly. you immediately have a manager and you're making money on instagram right so um He's, you know, he's like riding this train and he's right, basically just trying to cash in on this cred, like some kind of like, ooh, I have credibility. Look at me now. So now let me introduce to you Jasmine Fiore. 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 Jasmine sure. Fiore. <laughs> she grew up in uh, Bonnie Dune, California, uh, which is outside of Santa Cruz. She's uh, eight years old when her parents split. So she she comes from a very different background than... Um, Ryan. Than Ryan does mm-hmm. where, you know, they're not necessarily wealthy, but she she grows up in a very humble, you know, almost kind of country background. She does have friends who have horses, things like that. But it's much more humble beginnings than Ryan. Um, she But she had big dreams. And at in 2006, she moved to Vegas uh, where she had she started yearling cards at the playboy club. She started modeling on the side, beautiful blonde hair, um, Vegas type. Very right. Yeah. Like, so she had, she, you know, she got herself, you know, a boob job and she sure. was like, girl, I'm going to perk this bitch up and ride this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like Keegan it. said, you got to secure the bag. You got to secure the bag. That's right. I, I get it. And like on no shade in that game. Like, girl, look, I got fake boobs too. I'm do, <laughs> do you, do Yep. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. Yep. And so she did. She moved to Vegas. She's dealing cards at the Playboy Club, modeling, doing all this fun stuff, living her best Vegas life. And in March 2009, she um, goes to this club, an upscale club on the strip and bumps into Ryan. 
They hit it off immediately. They hit it off so much so that within two days of their meeting, they get married at the Little White Chapel. E- that's fast. Okay, pump the brakes. <laughs> that's Whoa. Weird. That's fast. Yeah. No. Just, I like, look, I know. Live your life. But, but yeah. so here's some caveats I, to that. I, I would advise against it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it ain't for me. It's not for me. Yeah. Here's some of the things, though, that I did hear that might explain. Well, the Aphrodite Jones was really trying to push, like, how does reality TV affect you? And is it because he was so spurned from this loss? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. And then I had heard his friend, um, her friend, sorry, her best friend, best guy friend, had said that what really had happened was that he was looking for a visa, basically, and was like, I want to. Where is he from? My- Canada. Canada. Oh, okay. he's like, I want to get my fast track into Cal- or into right. living in the States. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to be able to two days, though, that's like the express train. Like- well, apparently he had offered to pay her ten thousand dollars a month. That's what her friend says. So I don't know how much of this has been substantiated. But he was like, I'll give you like ten thousand dollars a month. We're going to live a rich life. This is going to be fabulous. I'm wealthy. Mm-hmm. I well, I mean it's, it's a business it's trans- arrangement transaction what it and sounds both like both parties are get what they want out of it then yeah. I mean I'm not wholly opposed to it I just think even 2 days for that kind of agreement is fast yeah, yeah. yeah. it's well, still fast and I think anybody that's looking at your visa is like oh you married somebody after 2 days right yeah that seems legit yeah, that feels right <laughs> but everything seemed you know kind of somewhat rosy and perfect very quickly um but just like you, you've known somebody for two days so yeah after two days it can feel perfect but just as quickly as it was perfect literally only a month into their marriage things soured i mean at some point you got to fart yeah and <laughs> <laughs> i mean you got to you have to you got to yeah um so and and quickly like things soured because you know she's starting to have to spend money he's not giving her money and he's like oh well my money is all tied up in canada and you know getting it to get over i'm here. sorry your money is tied up in canada listen for somebody that gets paid from canadian dollars i i feel this <laughs> so no. i know sometimes it does take a bit of time i mean you have to wait 10 days 10 days though is not a month. yeah 10 day- I and also and bank, I get uh, it. Lots, again, lots this of is this is why two days is too fast because if this is a business transaction, which again, fine. If all, everybody's an adult here, you guys can make decisions like that. Not every marriage needs to be this like romantic fairy tale situation, but if this is a business transaction, mm-hmm. we are going over everything with a fucking fine tooth, mm-hmm. like calm, like yeah. everything is being examined then because this is it's a serious thing. Yeah. It's still a serious thing. And so the terms need to be fully agreed upon. Yeah. yeah because th- getting out of it when it's yeah. bad is a fucking nightmare. Yes. It's a pain in the yes, ass. Exactly. It's huge. Exactly. Thing. Drive through annulment thing there. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it, it isn't like going as planned. You know, this is not what she signed up for. She's starting to use money that, you know, she'd been saving away and, you know, which is not a big deal for her to spend money, but this is not what the yeah. relationship had started on. This, right. this what wasn't they, the agreement. Yeah, it wasn't what they signed up for. Um, and for a rich guy, he just never seemed to actually, again, have any money. Like, you know, like, right. You know, so it was just a weird. It's like, I'm not very liquid right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. So Jasmine decided she's like, forget it. I'm out of here. She moved to L.A. Um, and. Ryan was like, uh, no, I love you and follows her. Rejection. He yep. can't handle he's like, it. He's like, no, but wait, I actually love you. So he follows her to LA. She lets him move in with her and they're like, we're going to try this out. Ryan is very jealous though. And he, um, yeah, he sounds like he has a fucking ego problem. Yeah. Big time. Well, and one of the things that he does do is that when they were in Vegas, they had actually had an incident where he, they were at a pool party together, like with a bunch of friends, whatever. And, you know, 
she's, I mean, this is a relationship of circumstance. This is not like we're in love with each other. Right. So she's making out with some guy at the party and he sees her and he loses his shit. So he pushes her. He like goes over, shoves her and then pushes her into the pool. A man that will push you like that or react that way yeah. in front of other people. That's, that's a dangerous. That's fucking dangerous. Person. That's yes. dangerous. Do not be alone with them because if they're that in fucking front of cavalier people. in front. Of, can you fucking imagine if somebody pushed me in front of our friend group? That, Dude, that person's got to be person. fought. Do you remember? I told Dude, you, Emerson like, would when, pull, yes, yes, I wish when a motherfucker we would. saw that guy who had roofied us, we saw him the next weekend at the bar, mm -hmm. and Emerson was like, about like our friend uh emerson i realize that the people listening don't know who that you is yeah. um <laughs> but but he's a friend of ours and he was like he went to security and he's like you need to get him out of here or like we're gonna have a fucking problem yeah so like no i cannot imagine somebody uh, that, physically shoving you no in our any group. any kind of physical yeah, I'm like what anything. the fuck did her friends at that party do well, you know what i mean anybody at that party, anybody even if you guys aren't even if it's like just a random party and you're not like a bunch of a friend group like who the, who the fuck watches that happen right even oh, if right. it wasn't someone even if it wasn't someone that i knew if i saw that you're at least being like hey what the fuck yeah right? like the bare minimum bare minimum i'm yeah a, i'm a get involved person i, I know too. i know that that about myself now because i i know that when i saw that fucking fight that happened yelled, across yeah i yelled and stopped and then fucking ran over like and i'm like i did not know that about myself but i am a get involved person <laughs> i know that now so um so they do um so she does press charges she does end up deciding to drop the charges though so he spends two days in jail that's it but you know, of course, apologies and whatever. She moves to L.A. He follows her there. So his jealousy increases somewhat and to the point where she's just kind of like, whatever, we're just living together. It sounds very roommate -y at this point. Very mm. quickly kind of is not. So really hold on. He pushed her before they moved. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because well, like she that, moved that he followed, yeah, he followed her. her, but she let him move in like yeah. that, that, that. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah. I mean, they're also married. So what do you do? I don't know. I don't know. But I've clearly, never been in they have a very different understanding of what, like, They're clearly also kids. Practically, I mean, you're talking like early twenties. Like, this is not, you know, and they're in different places in in their lives. I yeah. mean, I, I definitely don't blame her for letting him. I mean, she had the yeah. reasons to do whatever she did. Yeah, I did. I did a lot of dumb stuff or yeah. let let a lot of stuff slide. Like looking back and being like, that is a fucking red flag. Mm -hmm. You know, that could have that could have been a really bad situation. And I'm lucky that it, it wasn't. Yeah, I think yeah. she probably didn't have guidance because mm -hmm. there's there's no way if you were going to press if it was a friend of mine and I'm like, you were going to press charges on this motherfucker. So, you knew yeah. that like what he did to you was, was not OK. And you uh, the, if you came to me and you're like, somebody's moving in, I'd be like, I don't fucking absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to get that shit annulled immediately. Yeah. Yeah. So he does really wild things, though. Like he's like, I I think that he's thinking with his own uh, basis and background in his mind. He's like, I'm going to bring girlfriend girls over to the house and have her catch me with them so that she gets jealous. Oh, fuck you. And it's just, you know, like she's like, cool, bro. Uh, yeah. Right. Like, I think that she does get angry. She gets upset that he does that. But it's it's just such a it's so. This relationship is such a whatever place. It's you know like, what I mean? It sounds like, like so high school. It does. It does sound so high school. Yes. Didn't you do that shit Very in high immature. school where you're like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna hold hands with Ben, and that's gonna make him jealous? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All that, all that game playing and bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh, but Ryan, gross. however, however they come down to it, Ryan has convinced himself that he is he is actually in love with Jasmine, and Jasmine is, I think, resigned herself to the this relationship and like making it work trying it out um in the meantime though ryan does get cast for another tv show called i love money season three <laughs> it's shooting in mexico oh, fucking goddamn! put the 2000s burn it <laughs> we gotta set it on fire <laughs> Oh my god. Set all the odds on fire. <laughs> so funny. Um, while he's away shooting in Mexico, Jasmine does meet up with one of her old boyfriends and she does file for an annulment while she's he's gone because he's like she's like, you know what? I don't know what we're doing here. This is No, it's mess. not the agreement that you agreed upon. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. a marriage. What is it? And this is only three months after their marriage. And like honestly, like let's just annul this. Let's move forward. We're not good for each other. This is crazy. Yeah. You know? Um 
when Ryan returns, though, he's like, he's like, Jasmine, I won the show. I won the show and I did this for you. The whole reason I went on the show and to win this money was so that I could be with you because I wanted you to be happy. So I know. Hmm. I know. And I'm like, to me, I was like, I before I even read the story, I was like, I don't know if this is so much a crazy in love or crazy in love with money. Yeah. Because it just feels so driven by yes, such yeah. an outside Absolutely. force that it just feels. But sometimes those things can be like so conflated and like mixed up. Well, and especially you said her background was uh, not as secure as, as his was. And sure. dude, I fucking know being out here in L.A. and I'm sure Vegas is the same way on your own. Oh, yeah. It's. Dude, there were times where I'm just like, man, it'd be just so e- so much easier to shack up with somebody. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Jesus. Yeah. It's like fucking expensive. <laughs> like, money does matter. It, yeah. Life is better when you have enough money yeah. to yeah. live and it. <laughs> regardless of the motivations or, or whatever, he, he truly does feel like this money is going to turn it around for them. So she, she does. She's like, you know what? Let's give this another try. She does something completely out of character, colors her hair dark and decides like, you know what? Like let's almost like it was like, let's make a fresh start at this. We're going to be new people and we're going to go with this. Uh, we've all been there. Like, you know, you like colored if, your if, hair. If your girlfriend. It, okay. This is a heads up y'all. <laughs> if you have a friend and she's not and, a hairdresser and she got bangs yep. or she did something drastic, you maybe want to text her and be like, Hey, Everything okay? Everything okay? Yeah, because that's what you're like. You're making a life change, and it starts by getting bangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or going coloring. from blonde to mm-hmm. like dark black. brown. Yeah. Whenever, it's, especially that's since big. probably if we're talking like Vegas style, like it's exactly it, what you imagine. Yeah, yeah. And so if she's going from blonde to dark, you're like, oh girl, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a major life you're change for you. Are, life are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. And, you know, so again, there she's like, and they're posting the pictures on their MySpace page and he's posting the, these videos of, I love my wifey. And it's like this like whole new change of events. Their life is turning around. Um, during this time, uh, Megan Once Millionaire does premiere and everything seems to be going really well. Um, then Thursday, August 13th, the happy couple checked into a romantic hotel getaway down in Del Mar. And they are down there for a few days uh, to go to a poker tournament and this like charity event. So, you know, everything seems to be looking up. So they go to this poker tournament at the Hilton in San Diego. This is the last time they're seen on film together. So they're seen coming out of this and getting their valet car. And that's the last time they're seen together. The next day on the 14th, He's texting all of, of of her friends like, hey, have you heard from, have you seen Jasmine? Do you know where Jasmine's at? I don't know where she's at. She's, you know, if she's trying to pull some shit, this isn't cool. Like, this isn't funny. I don't know where she's gone. Like, she better not be playing a prank on me. So, like, all day there's all these texts back and forth. She gets, he gets back to his house and on the morning of the 15th, he files a police report. Well, meanwhile, Buena Vista, California... These people find this, I think it's guy, finds a suitcase in the dumpster of his apartment complex. And inside the suitcase is the mutilated body of a woman. Oh, Jesus. It's so degrading. Like, that's just the most. (laughs) It's the most. So this woman that they find in the suitcase, they have no real way to define who this woman is because her teeth have been pulled out and all of her finger tips have been all our fingers have been cut off Mm. so there's not really any way for them to figure out who this person is so you know they take her back they do all the autopsies they determine that actually how she died was she had been very physically abused like like beaten and was strangled and that's how she died Mm. so awful it's awful like it's rage horrible. and scary it's absolutely a rage like what a scary way because yeah it gives you so much time to think about what's happening to you like well, that's f- what's so scary about that oh, mm-hmm. so frightening I'm and certain. and you have mixed feelings for this person clearly you know yeah. like you there's a part of you that loves them something and, triggered you yeah definitely and to to feel like you have all that time to think about 
this person that you love is doing this thing to you or that you care about in some way. Yeah. But the, the other thing too is like, there's something obviously so wrong with him that like, you know, I, I'm like three months into something right now and I, I care about Eric deeply. I love him, but, but I don't, you. I don't care enough to get the kind of feelings that I think you would need to feel to be, beat somebody to death to have that do you know what i mean rage. like that yes. is that is somebody that obviously has like a real mental issue mm -hmm. well i mean he clearly had rage problems anyway because Correct. like he pushed her already yeah you yeah. know like yeah in There's front of people deep down inside of him mm -hmm. that can't lose it's right. yeah, and it's I not about there, her. There's a, there's a deep level of narcissism and probably sociopathy that we're 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 dealing with here. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. cut to the police investigation, what they found, and and how they were able to piece this together. Um, he, they um, so they did go through all the video evidence of like them at the hotel. They see them leave the hotel dressed up for the party, the event. They see him. Um, returning, but how they see him returning is he's running to the room by himself. So what they think happened and what they assumed happened is that th what they know from her phone is that she had actually been texting her ex-boyfriend that she had talked to while he was gone. So he saw and it. And she was like, she was like, get me the fuck out of here. Send your private jet. She's like, I'm done. I'm done with this relationship. So she, they, what they assume. She's trying to leave. Is that she's trying to leave and that yeah. he found this and found that she was talking and to another guy. Here's, here's, Something that I think people should keep in mind is that whenever we criticize or we look at like a domestic violence situation on the outside and make judgments about it um, and people are always like, well, why didn't you just leave or like whatever, because the easy. most dangerous time for someone who's in a relationship like this is when they choose to leave. Oh, that's yeah. That's when that's when the other person is most likely to go the fuck off the rails. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that kind of seems like maybe it's what happened here. It was like she was making plans to get out and right. he found out and his ego cannot handle it. Nope. Can't mm -hmm. handle that kind of rejection. I, it reminds me of when people try to quit doing a drug. Mm -hmm. You can't just cold turkey certain drugs, right? You can't just be like, I'm going to quit smoking crack today. Done. You know? Yeah. Like you need a, a process. Or like maybe you can when and maybe you, it works out for you, but that doesn't mean it's going to work out for everybody right. or like everyone's situation is like that. But you're you know? absolutely right when you say that the most dangerous time it's proven, the most dangerous yeah. time for a woman to leave an abusive relationship or for a woman in an abusive relationship is when she decides to leave. Yeah. I, I think there are ways to leave. I yeah. think that you have to have a good planning and you have to have a good support system and you have to put like steps into place mm -hmm. to help you get out of it because you should leave. You can't stay because it's not safe to leave. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you just have to have a good support system and there's lots of resources out there for you. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. So to move on with the story real quickly. Mm -hmm. So he, with what's assumed is that he probably found this out. They assume at this time she, he beat the shit out of her in her car and they drove back to the, their hotel. Well, they had a back entrance to their hotel, which was off of a patio. They feel, they think that he probably dragged her body up to the patio, tried to get in, realized he couldn't get in from that side and then ran, ran around the front. So the next time you see him on video, he's coming out the door and there's this big like um, uh, credenza type thing, like a big mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, in the hallway. Yeah. And you see him come out, look down the hallway, both sides and put like the receiver, the 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 phone receiver on top of it. Hmm. So you're like, hmm, why is he hiding a phone? Mm -hmm. Is he trying to make sure she doesn't call anybody? Do the is she still alive at this point? So that's what the police suspect that she was probably still alive at that point. And that he eventually was like, she like, you can't call the police, you know, and she was probably wanted to call the police. And so he probably yeah. strangled her. Yeah. She might have just been like be like dying, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, oh my God. Awful. So then the next time you see him come out, He's carrying a bundle of like clothes and a bunch of other stuff, things that would probably have been in a suitcase. And he mm -hmm. leaves the room. So that's the last time he's emptied him. out his suitcase. Pro very yeah. likely he just emptied out his suitcase to, to create space to put her in. Oh my God. So he I just, I, I, not that we really want to go there, but like I just can't imagine even someone that I hated, the what. It, 
is going on with you that you could, what kind of compartmentalization or like disassociating do you need to do to be able to put someone in a suitcase? Well, look well, at, wait, look at Robert you, Durst. You know what I mean? Like they legitimately like dismembered a body. You know what I mean? So like, did he pretty much. And yeah. that's the thing. It's like you went from, you went from beating your wife, mm -hmm. strangling your wife to then saying, uh oh, I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm going to pull all of her teeth out now and cut off her fingers. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, yeah, the level of like the, the the amount that you, there has to be something going on with the wiring of your brain that well, you're able to dissociate to that degree because to that degree because well, I just back to all about you. It's a narcissism thing. You're exactly right because the beating of and and strangling of her was never about her or her cheating. It was about how it affects him, his feelings, his feelings, yeah. his her leading it, him. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's also like your mind, you're my property. And then now, Oh, I don't want to get in trouble. It's I, 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 me, 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 that's right. Mine, my mind. That's so, right. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. Right. Absolutely. And so he, um, on his way back to Los Angeles, he does, he drops her body again, 30 miles South in Buena Vista in in this dumpster and drops the car off in west hollywood at a place close to their house which wasn't found until after the fact he like i had said went to the police station filed the missing person report the next morning and basically takes off and so when they're finding the body and they're realizing that this is probably the woman they actually ch take her breast implants and contact her doctor because they do think that this may be connected. Contact her doctor and get the serial number for her breast implants and, and find out that this, in fact, is Jasmine. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the L.A. Police Department calls um, calls Ryan and are like, hey, Ryan, I got a couple of follow up questions for Quick you. Quick question. Just no big deal. Pop in. He's like, oh, I'd love to. However, I'm on my way to Canada because I have a little visa issue that uh -uh. I have to clear up. Uh -uh 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 -uh. <laughs> so don't leave town. Motherfucker. Triggers, alarm bells, all the things go off. They are like... Amazing he told them that. I know. Right. Well, and the fact that they couldn't get him right away, they were immediately already on alert. But the fact that he was like, mentions Bye. Canada at all. Yeah. So he's got a pilot's license. He's got connections in other countries. They're like, he is going to try to get into a non-extradition country. That's... They're like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So they get everyone involved it is a, in all points bulletin for ev bulletin <laughs> bulletin for for all law enforcement on every level and also canada as well now because this is, could be an international affair if he crosses uh border fast forward to the end which is that they do find him three days later in a hotel room in hope british columbia um they find him because the uh manager of the hotel goes to go into the room and they find him that he had hung himself. <gasps> what a fucking coward piece of shit. Seriously. Again, he's such a fucking narcissist. Like, yeah, he couldn't go down. And in <sighs> fact, what they found on his computer was because they didn't find like a real true suicide note, but they found a like quote unquote will and testament on his computer. And even in this quote unquote last will and testament he never truly admits to what he's done and in fact basically pretty much almost blames of course he Jasmine. does of course he does it is the most ugh, ugh wild bullshit you've well, ever seen well it's fucking terrible for jasmine but at least you know he won't be able to do that to anybody else right you know and that's you know basically what her her mother says too she she's like it's it's a weird place to be in, right? Because you, you want justice. You want justice. Yeah. You yes, he'll never be able to you do this again. You want him to admit to, to what he coward. did and he didn't. Yeah. There's just a lot of yeah. layers to it. Um <clears throat> the um VH1 though does end up pulling the show Megan Wants a Millionaire. It was already, I think, like three episodes in. They pulled they pulled the show. They pulled any uh, anything from YouTube. They, I mean, it's really hard to find anything about it at all. Um, there's they pulled it off their website. They pulled everything. They were like, wow, be, it, because yeah. the family, you know, yeah. what I mean, like this is, you know, and of course they never they never aired the um, I love money or whatever. Yeah, I love yeah. money mm -hmm. season three, which he does win, by the way. Um, spoiler, but <laughs> yeah, so it's. 
pretty fucking horrible. And um, oh, it, this is the other thing. What also emerges after the fact, after all of this is said and done, is that before he went on the show, they had done a bunch of background checks. Of mm-hmm. course, they do. They do extensive background checks right. before you go on these shows. Um, but they only do background checks in the U.S. Well, he's a Canadian citizen. And it turned out that two years prior to them filming, Ryan had been charged with assaulting a woman, bodily harm to a woman in Calgary. Um, the show, of course, never knew this because... Okay, but seems like if you are going to have people from other countries, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. contact somebody, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. call someone. Yeah. Oh wow! God damn, that is infuriating. Yeah, I'm like, this is not going to be one of those fun ones. I do. This is the I'm going to flip a fucking table one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is upsetting. Jesus. <sighs> well, <laughs> fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Uh, palate cleanser time. Yeah. Then. Yeah. What, what are we? Uh, what are we watching? Well, I finished uh, I finished season two of Succession, and man, I will say. Speaking of flipping tables, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll say like truly believe it is one of the best written shows on television. Like yeah. I think mm-hmm. that it is so well written, it is so well acted, it mm-hmm. deserved all of the acclaim that it got, and the second season was great, and I will definitely keep watching it, but. <laughs> Those people are the worst people ever. And it's some sometimes it's hard to watch a show where like everybody's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all terrible. And even when you feel like empathy for somebody, you're still like, but you're still a piece of shit. Yeah. Though. You're like, I hate like you. <laughs> uh so yeah, I mean, and that's really all I've had time to watch this week because mm-hmm. work has just been crazy and and stuff but but yeah i mean it is good if you're thinking about watching it i would definitely give it a shot if you like if you like good tv yeah i've Mm -hmm. never i've never seen it and i only hear good things about it it's great it is it's a very well produced show it's a very good show but man those people will make you want to murder yeah Yeah. it's it's difficult for me you know i i have a such a eat the rich personality and yeah. Me too. Poor it's Anthony just, just like, has to hear me just fucking. It just it it, it gets me rage. really really <laughs> yes. amped up. It gets me really upset. Yeah, when they're I'm like, "Hey, like, can I just have a a quick um small one one hundred million dollar loan from you, Dad?" I'm like, "I want to kill you right I now." Know. <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> we did. Um, I I told you guys I watched I Tanya, which mm-hmm. was so enjoyable. Okay. Great. I I just missed it when it came out, and so it was cool to to pick that up and watch it. And, um, and then the, the boy band con, which I had no idea mm-hmm. about. I mean, okay, I, re- well, where is this? Cause I don't even know about this. This is on HBO. Okay. It's called the boy band. I con, knew it was the Lou out. Perlman yes, story. Fucking it's, Lou Perlman, that piece of shit. I Woo! started watching it. So I, I mean, it's got, um, members of NSYNC, um, Backstreet Boys, O-Town, Take five, Damn. like all that. Like Maybe. he redid mm-hmm. all these. I, I think it's important too to point out that like we do talk a lot about how women in the entertainment industry have been taken advantage of, and they have, they and have. they deserve that kind of recognition. But these boys, they're boys. They're boys. And here's the thing: music business has been fucking people over since For, since forever. For, since forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is just the latest like iteration of it. But I had no idea. It was freaking just even watching the trailer. It's fascinating because you have. These kids from NSYNC and Backstreet Boys have been touring for like a couple years and then they're like finally going to get their Their first check, their first payday. And two years of nonstop touring, like working like eight hours a day. And their children. Their children or whatever. They go to this big restaurant and they open up their very first paycheck and Lance Bass was like $10,000 after working full time for two years. $10,000 Ten thousand dollars, and they they had so they sold made five thousand dollars a year. Millions mm-hmm. of records. They have filled arenas. Everything. Ten thousand dollars is what they got. Uh, honestly, all of the shit between that story, oh. thinking about Succession, and then the boy band con. I want to burn it all down. Oh, burn yeah. it well, all down. You'll love mine then for this week. Yeah. Great, Make millions. Dude. <laughs> oh yeah, I've yeah. been watching that too. It is so good. That FBI agent Dude, is funny. I love it i love him 
he's such a character he's so good Hell, Listen, yeah. yeah okay so i heard there were some bad reviews which i hate even bringing up because okay so to be fair one of our friends is in the show right so we're biased a teensy bit and we're biased af and um he plays uh uncle jerry well, well jerry of, colombo i don't colombo, know if it's right. who's uncle jerry yeah, we don't know who uncle two jerry, jerry is yet uncle, yeah but he plays jerry colombo which is the most fucking perfect casting ever when i saw that picture i was like i know bro this is so good spot on yeah so somebody was saying chris was telling me that the, some of the reviews were like oh we don't like the reenactments and i was like i think it's fucking brilliant I think it's cheeky i, actually, I, I think like it's fun it. and i think it's because some of the story is very humorous and the the fucking fbi agent is so well, the concept is so like wild the, the concept is so it seems silly it's like it's like a mix donald's it's like fast food and <laughs> monopoly and all yeah. of these things seem so ridiculous like so ludicrous but then you're like no but it's actually really serious no but, <laughs> to but me, actually i i feel like i feel like if you liked the big short then uh-huh. you would like this it's the same movie. Energy. it's the same kind of energy you know as that it's it feels i haven't like- started it yet because i'm a bad friend uh, <laughs> but i will i will start it soon yeah, dude, that's so fun. Well, if you've got something that we should be watching, if you've got stories, we are always, always accepting stories. Go to our one-stop shop of a website. It's myworstatepodcast.com. And we appreciate you guys listening so much. If you got a second, like and review the show. Yes, we haven't yes, yes. we haven't asked yeah. for it in a while. Yeah. And it would I be guys. I love super, getting super new helpful. Reviews. Yeah. It just makes me happy. But we love you guys listening and doing all that you do and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.